All right, today we are here to answer the question, is EVE Online worth playing in 2023? Now, a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, I have been playing EVE since 2010, so I guess there might be some bias there, uh, and, and that's the intent of the video. So all clickbait aside, I'm just going to start out by saying that what I'm really going to tell you about today is why you should check out EVE Online this year, now, when you're watching this, whatever it is. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is really talk about what EVE Online even is. So what is EVE Online? Let's start with their explanation from their video, EVE Online official gameplay trailer. EVE Online is a vast universe, alive with the unrelenting activity and combined history of its players. Pursuing lives of adventure, warfare and prosperity, they share this existence in the biggest single shard, free-to-play MMO of all time. All right, that's it. So, so EVE Online is the world's largest sci-fi universe uh, as a free-to-play MMO. So let's talk about that a little bit. EVE Online itself, the game, uh, the actual game, is a free-to-play game in the fact that you can play the game for as long as you want for free no matter what. However, uh, there is a premium account version that costs $20 US a month that basically most people uh, end up doing, that, that, uh, that play the game for a long period of time. Some people like to say that the alpha or free-to-play version of it is the trial version. It, it can very well be argued that alpha clones or free-to-play clones have access to a lot more of EVE than most people would probably think about. Most of the different types of ships, it's just mostly they're focused on combat sort of skills and orientation as opposed to like industry or utility or any of those kinds of things. So there, it is free to play, but you might as well just consider that if you're going to be playing this game long term, you're going to want one or two accounts that are subscribed to every month. Now, the good news is, is that you can actually pay for your in-game time, your Omega account, your, your premium time with in-game currency, sort of. P some people like to do like RMT in a lot of other games, right? Where you buy gold in order to get power or whatever. In EVE, RMT is considered incredibly bad. However, you are allowed to buy game time and premium currency and then turn that around and sell it on the in-game market. So as a free player, if you make enough ISK per month, the in-game currency, you can actually pay for your account using in-game currency by purchasing that game time from other players who have chosen to buy that game time to sell in order for them to have their own currency to do things. There's other games that have kind of adopted this mentality, but EVE Online uh, has been doing it longer than pretty much anybody else. And uh, the market and, f and open market nature of EVE Online makes it particularly good at managing this kind of system. While not everybody's gonna be able to get do that, and it does take a bit of effort, uh, especially for a new player to be able to make enough money to get Omega. Uh, the the God honest truth is that an alpha could spend upwards of five to six months perfectly fine and not actually run into any real problems, not actually even see a difference between an alpha and Omega besides the fact that a paid account will train twice as fast. Actually, that leads us into the next topic, which is skills and why it is good to start now rather than tomorrow. It is always better to start EVE earlier than later. No matter when you start EVE, if you enjoy it and you get into it, you will say, man, I wish I got into this game earlier. One of the biggest reasons why is because skills are trained over time. The management of the game, both, both uh, free to play and uh, paid for accounts are managed through skills. 
skills can both unlock abilities like for instance uh this mimitar battlecruiser skill uh, allows would allow me to fly these new ships depending on which tier i'm in or what level of the skill i've trained and then there are other skills that simply just make things better right like for instance this gunnery skill motion prediction uh well actually it does unlock weapons too but what this does is it gives me an increase in my ability for my turrets to be able to hit things right so there are skills that are designed to unlock things there are skills that are designed to just make things better and then there's a combination of both a lot of the skills that make things better also happen to unlock things at certain tier the point is is that these skills train over time you can't just kill a bunch of monsters in order to level up in eve online the skill training trains up over time so the sooner you begin the sooner you start to collect these skills the sooner you can get a lot of that basic training done in order to jump into the more advanced things so this is one of the reasons why an alpha clone can get by so long for so uh, so well because even if they went omega they still wouldn't be able to use any of that premium stuff right away because it's still not trained they now have the option to train it if they wanted to but it's not like getting a paid account just gives you everything for free right well and or gives you everything right away the really big thing that omega will do for you in the early days is double your training queue but as you're still trying to discover the universe around you and learn the mechanics of the game i recommend don't even sweating it you've got plenty of things to train you've got plenty of things to do uh while you're still learning a game as an early point but the earlier you get into it the sooner you're going to be able to get uh, get into the game into its higher levels and all that kind of stuff that said, this naturally leads itself to a concern by a lot of people, which is this game is a 20 year old game. How am I ever, ever going to catch up in a, in a world, especially in a world where the skill queue is trained over time? How am I going to be able to catch up? There's somebody with 20 years of training over me. Well, there's two things that make that different. One, having a lot of skill points doesn't necessarily make you better past a certain point at any given thing this character that has a hundred million skill points which is like almost a decade of training problem or like half a decade of training she might not be able to fly a frigate any better than a new player with only a month or two in the game if if that new player specialized their skills in flying frigates and the reason why is because any given task can only have skills that are applied to that task apply to it right so if i'm flying a frigate then all my mining skills don't matter all my battleship skills don't matter all my industry skills don't matter all my pi skills don't matter none of that matters it's actually totally doable for a newer player to catch up based on specific roles it's just about specialization and then as you gain more experience what you do is you don't necessarily get more powerful at the thing that you're trying to do that caps out at a certain point it's just you begin to collect you know you broaden the things that you have access to which as an alpha you can actually use a buddy code a buddy code to get 1 million sp for free which is like 30 to 40 days of training for an alpha clone half that for an omega you can get that for free using the buddy code which you can get mine down below and you can do this for every single account so you could actually train up multiple alpha clones and set them into training multiple different things you get up to five million skill points training passively as a free-to-play account for free that's why it's like five to seven months of training or whatever so you could like try out all different kinds of things and put people in different places and when you're ready to go omega you can go omega right you can only have one of the alphas logged in but once you have characters go omega you can have as many omegas logged in at a time all right so on top of that though you can now get skill points for login rewards and for events right about every month or so there is some almost every month of the of the year there's some sort of event and those events have login rewards that often come with a ton of skill points and they also have skill boosters uh, these accelerators so the last one that we just did was um the winter nexus event 
which came with these brain freeze accelerators. What these do is they just increase your attributes, which increase your training. I'm not going to go too deep into what that means at this point, but what it was suffice it to say, what these basically do is this basic one will increase your training speed by roughly uh, 20%, whereas the potent one is you know almost 40% additional training speed for that period of time. So using this, you can get additional skill points. You can get skill points every day or nearly every day for killing NPCs for a thing called skills for kills. So, and finally, there is also a new air career program, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a little bit. But the cool thing about the air career program is that there are rewards for skill points throughout the air career program. So you can, you can complete these tasks to gain skill points up to uh 400,000 from there plus another five so 525,000 skill points total so over half almost half a million just for doing the 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 new player career program so there's lots of really good ways for you to do catching up also back in 2016 they introduced a concept called the skill injector so what people can do now is they can buy extractors off the market and then pull out part of their brain and make a skill injector, which they can sell on the market. And you can buy that skill injector and plug it into your head to get free skill points. So all of these different methods allow you as a new player to jump in and uh, get involved, catch up, and be as impactful as anyone else in the game. Within a couple of months, it will be you'll be indistinguishable from most of the other players of the game. Because while there are some pretty experienced players, the vast majority of players aren't. Uh, it's not like you're always going to be running into like 10 year old uh, players with massive wallets or whatever like that. Depending on what you choose to do and what and where you choose to go and how you choose to interact with Eve, you can have just as much, if not a bigger impact on the game and on the sandbox as anyone else right away as a new player. Because the most important thing is that the things that it takes to be successful to Eve Online has nothing to do with skill points nothing all of this stuff with skill points that's just kind of like how thing how you get to use certain ships and all that stuff but ultimately it's about you it's about how well you know the system it's about how well you know how to pilot it's about how well you know understand the market it's about how well you can manage people either enemies or allies and those skills are the skills that will make you succeed or fail in eve online the isk and the skill points are just a means to that end you know keep that in mind that especially as a new player your number one goal should not necessarily be about accumulating isk at the very beginning right that's the same that would be the equivalent of like somebody joining world of warcraft and immediately trying to farm gold at level 10 right like you don't you're not grown up yet learn the game and you will get the most out of the game which brings me to the next point which is that the negative things that you may have heard about EVE Online are largely not true. And I know that that may sound, I don't know, loaded or whatever, but this is really true. There are, you know, EVE Online, as I said, is like a 20-year-old game. And so it has a reputation that it's built up. Some people like to say spreadsheets in space. Some people like to say psychopath simulator. You know, like it's gotten these reputations through these stories. But the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of things have changed and there's a lot more to Eve than what is talked about on the surface. Now, admittedly, the spreadsheets and space side of things has kind of remained true insofar as uh, there's a lot of management in the game. There's a lot of moving pieces. And in fact, I would argue that there's probably more complexity in moving pieces now than there has been before. That said, the tools in game and out of game have also been made significantly better to help uh, compensate that for that. However, uh, when it comes to the psychopath simulator uh, accusation, things are a little bit different. While it is true that Eve as a sandbox allows players to basically do whatever to one another within the context of the sandbox, in recent years, we've definitely seen a shift away from the kind of things that would get Eve Online the most negative publicity uh, publicly, right? We've seen a lot of more uh, cultural 
uh, you know, both from the player's point of view, shifts in culture of what is acceptable versus not, changes in CCP's policies uh, about harassment and whatnot that are designed to both preserve the essence of the game, but also get rid of some of the more toxic side of things. And then also a lot of things that they've done to help make the game clearer. Honestly, let's let's be honest, a lot of the older players back in the day would rely on the obtuse nature of EVE Online to get over on newer players, right? The less understandable EVE Online is, the more likelihood that you are to make a mistake, the more likelihood that someone else can capitalize on that mistake to punish you, take your money, kill your ship, whatever. So EVE Online becoming a more understandable game over time has made it so that uh, those kinds of things have become less and less and less in the limelight. So yeah, there's that. There's also the accusation that the game is too overwhelming to play, right? Oh my God, EVE Online, such a such an interesting game to read about, but I could never I could never play it. Well, here's the thing. As I said earlier, the sooner you start training, the better. Training works passively even when you're offline. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you play the game for an hour a day, uh, 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 an hour a week or 10 hours a day. You're still going to be training skills. And in fact, I actually recommend, especially in the early days, having breaks from the game, right? Because if you're sitting there watching your skill queue train like tick down the whole time, you're going to like be chomping at the bit and feel super anxious. But if you take like a week off, just like focus on something else at some point, you're going to come back and be like, oh my God, all those things that I wanted to train are now trained. Yay! You know, whatever. So, you know, don't sweat it too much, especially in the early days. It's totally cool to be casual. It's totally cool to be an alpha. You have no, you have no monthly sub. You have nothing, no monkey on your back. You can just poke at it a couple of hours a day, a week, or however often you can for years my my activity in the game fluctuated from active every single day for multiple hours a day to not playing the game for like a month at a time. Um, but as long as your skill queue is is still going, then you come back and you've made progress and you feel good and, you know, you can keep going. So the game itself actually does not require as much time and energy to play as people like to say it does. It does have a tendency to suck you in. It does have a tendency to kind of expand, to consume all available space. Uh, but that's a, that's your that's your time management, right? Like the thing about Eve is that it's not necessarily a game in the same classic way that a lot of other video games are. It's not something that you just like work on, master, beat, and move on. It's a hobby. It's like a train set. It's the kind of thing that like in six years, you drag your friend over to be like, see, look at this cool thing. And then they don't understand it at all. The thing is, is that Eve will take up as much of your time as you let it. But if you don't at least have a character in the world, you're not making progress. Now, recently, there has been some more poignant concerns. You know, many of you might have already played Eve before. Maybe you've quit the game because you felt that it was too hard or too hard to understand or the people are too mean. Well, guess what? CCB has done a lot to make those things better for you. Um, there's a lot more uh, to engage with outside of just the null blocks or, you know, the bigger stuff. There's actual direction and uh, things for newer players to do, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. But... Maybe you've been hearing more recently, or maybe you've quit more recently in the last two to three years. Well, the thing is, is that there's been something going on that is known as scarcity. Scarcity scared a lot of people, right? And, and rightfully so. Scarcity was a period in time in which CCP acknowledged the fact that our economy was going out of control. There were some things that we have just accepted as normal within EVE Online that were making the game worse. And so CCP spent about two or three years systematically going through the game and fixing those systems. Some of them were deep core systems. And a lot of those changes were extremely unpopular. Why? Because people relied on those broken systems to make their fortunes. And then on top of that, there was what was known as scarcity, 
where CCP effectively cut off most of the faucets for major supplies to building equipment and ships, especially the largest, most powerful ships in the game, capitals and super capitals. So for two or three years, a lot of the things that people had become comfortable with had been disrupted and people were largely upset by that. But let's look at the actual impact of that, okay? First of all, let's. this is the reason why this had to happen. This is why this happened, ready? This is a graph that's known as the reign of the Rourke Wall. As you can see here, prior to 2017, you see a fairly uh, lower level of production and mining and all that sort of stuff. And then you see this massive, massive spike in mining and production. Not only is it making it so that equipment that isn't the rock wall the rock wall by the way is like the most expensive biggest largest mining platform in the entire game so it went from being a side sidelined off-grid ship that is designed to support a mining fleet to being one of the best miners in the game and when this change happened as you can see it vastly changed how much resources were being extracted and how many expensive big things were being built and so the things that were big and scary and rare before became more and more commonplace during this time. And CCP determined that this needed to end, that the uh, the reign of the Rorqual, we cannot survive in a an economy that's running this hot, this long, with this much resources pouring into it. So they began the shortage phase. And no one likes to have their, their wallet you know, tightened. Nobody likes to have their belt tightened. And so a lot, this made a lot of people upset. So this is a graph of login data for the last, uh, since 2019. This dip right here was a period, was a moment called uh, blackout, where basically they made NullSec much more dangerous, null security space, where a lot of the higher ISK earners uh, hang out. And so as you can see, it like caused a big suppression on the numbers. And this was known, this was seen as kind of a very low point. But you can see as scarcity goes on, that previous low point becomes more and more the norm. And we see bigger and bigger doom and glooming as time goes on during this time, as the numbers go down, the velocity of this goes down. You can see that the player base is kind of getting to the end of their, of their wits when it comes to a lot of these changes. However, you can also see at the very end this big uptick. And that's the latest expansion. That is the Uprising expansion. And that's what we're here today to talk about, really. You can see that this has created a recovery, but it's also not enough. A lot of people have come back. A lot of people are having fun, but not enough. Not enough people. So that's why we're talking about this sort of stuff today. If you come down here and look at the newbie, new characters being made, we can see another clear picture, which is that, you know, this number, these, these charts go up and down, but we actually don't see as big of a spike of new accounts being made as part of Uprising. I think a lot of returning players are coming in and they're exper they're enjoying themselves, but not, we're not seeing a whole ton of newer players coming in because of this. So uh, what I'm saying here is, is that if you are a newer player or if you've been out of the game for a long time, now is definitely the time to be looking at this kind of stuff. There's plenty of opportunity and not a whole ton of people coming in to uh, access it yet. But I think that that's going to get better over time. CCP has indicated that there's even more cool stuff to come. Uh, the doom and glooming was definitely kind of legit for a while, but a lot of the old doomsayers have now started to turn around and I'm seeing videos talking about how, uh, you know, Eve's come back. This universe, this sci-fi game that's almost 20 years old is seeing a second life, that this gambit that CCP had done to reboot the game has effectively been successful and it's worth checking out. It is a good opportunity to introduce who I am, if you're still watching this. I am Ash Rothy, the voice of New Eden, and I run an organization known as the Convocation of Empyreans. The Convocation of Empyreans are here to maximize engagement with EVE Online, and they're here to help you out with getting involved. We are also recruiting and open to having people come and check us out. So you can always come and hang out on our Discord. You can join our, our alliance. We help out with faction warfare 
We are on the side of the Galente Federation, and we provide ships and tools, everything that you need in order to be successful and learn how to play. And then once you've learned your place in EVE Online, you can decide to either stay and continue to help us with our efforts, or move on, where we have plenty of groups uh, that we have close friendships with that you can find a good home among the stars. So uh, feel free to come and check us out. Also, as I alluded to earlier, uh, make sure to use the buddy code, uh, which again, you can get down below in order to get your 1 million free SP. Uh, if you do that, absolutely feel free. Well, and even if you don't do that, feel free to reach out to me personally, Asherothian Game, Eve Mail, or on Discord. Uh, ask me questions, hit me up, you know, whatever. I'd be happy to help you maximize your engagement with EVE Online. All that said, what are the three reasons why you should play EVE Online in 2023. The first big reason why you should play EVE Online uh, is that it's beautiful and mysterious. EVE Online's visuals continue to be updated. You can look around. This does not appear to be a 10-year-old game. Or, sorry, a 20-year-old game. You know, they're, they're constantly working on the visuals. They're constantly making new effects, adding in things. Most recently, they've added in a thing called heraldry, which allows you to uh, add corporation and alliance logos to your ship. Uh, I don't happen to own one with this particular ship, but, you know, you can get that with all kinds of different ships right now. And they're adding in even more heraldry as time goes on. So even more ship customizations and whatnot. It's just the, their art team is consistently just super dedicated and continually working to improve the graphics and the audio and everything, just the experience of EVE Online. So it's just aesthetically a really, really good game uh, to just kind of chill out in, you know, honestly. It's, it's great for exploration. And they've recently added in a whole bunch of new cosmic phenomena. That's a, a, as a, as an example of the sort of stuff they did. And I've made actually a really short video that showcases some of that. So we'll look at some of that right now. Now, all of this is kind of sped up, by the way. But like, this is, that's what's called the Eve Gate right there. Uh, this is the Court of the Elements, I believe. And this is uh, Deep Cosmos. More Court of the Elements. Uh, this is the Pool of Radiance. And back to the... Yeah, there's the Pool of Radiance. There's back to the Eve Gate. And uh, this is the Deep Cosmos again. So, like I said, they're always putting in new and cool visuals, increasing, you know, working on updating the game and making sure that it is not treated as a 20 year old game. And I think that that's my biggest point. It's not just about the visuals. It's about the fact that uh, the, what the visuals show us is CCP's commitment to continually improving EVE Online. So this isn't just a 20 year old game. It also is in very many ways, a very modern game. So that's number one. Point number two, EVE Online is a sandbox. It is an open universe where you can travel anywhere the rules are few, and the opportunities are plenty, and the roles are infinite. One of the things I like to say about EVE Online is that EVE Online is one of the only true MMORPGs, really only true RPGs in modern gaming space. RPG, role-playing game. The idea is that you are taking on a role, a, a character within a fantastical universe, fantasy, sci-fi, whatever. But in a lot of other MMOs, your role is more of like a responsibility, right? My role is I'm a tank or I'm a DPS or I'm a healer. That's the role I play in that sense. But those are like mechanical combat, not free form. What's your role in the universe? EVE Online is much more towards that second half. Who you are in the game is defined by you. You can be whatever you want to be, a combat pilot, you can be an industrialist. You can be a warlord. You can be a politician. You can be a, an artist if you want. However, if you want to do it in EVE, you actually have to do it. 
if I'm in World of Warcraft and I want to be a tank and I want to be a righteous paladin, what do I have to do to be a righteous paladin in World of Warcraft? I have to select paladin, the class. That's it. I'm now a righteous paladin. In EVE Online, if you want to be a military leader, you better be ready to actually lead people into combat. You want to be a politician? You can be, but you better be willing to go out there and get them votes. You want to be an industrialist? You absolutely can be. But you know what? You're going to have to be focused on supply lines, management, personnel, finances, all that kind of stuff. There are people who have literally gone on to make actual Fortune 500 companies based on the knowledge and experience that they've done in EVE Online. So in that sense, EVE Online is not just like a game with like challenges that you do, like a lot of other MMOs. It literally is an alternative universe that you can test and experience and work on real life skills, be it communication, leadership, management, you know, finance, market, all those kinds of things. These are real skills that you can put to application in EVE Online and develop for real world use. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I stick with EVE Online uh, all these years is that like I wanted to get better at video editing and, and communication and leadership and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, doing that in the real world is expensive and risky. In EVE Online, you can mess it up and uh, whatever, man, you just try it again. And that's one of the things I truly, truly love about EVE is that you do get to actually take on a role within this sci-fi sandbox. In relationship to that, one thing that's really important about EVE that makes this all work is that EVE Online takes place in what's called one single shard. Uh, shards are actually a, a phrase that goes back to, all the way back to the old Ultima Online days. But the idea is that like most MMOs have multiple servers that are like exact copies of themselves. You join a server and if somebody else is on another server, you could be in the exact same location and still not see each other because you're actually on two different versions of the same thing. Eve has one server. Technically it has more than one. One is specific for China or whatever. But other than that, 90% of us all play on the one server, Tranquility. And therefore, that changes the ways things work. Uh, between that and the permanent nature of loss and gain in EVE Online, we build a reputation. If you want to, you could come and say hi to me right now. You don't have to worry about what server I'm on. You know what server I'm on. If you wanted to come and kill me right now, you could. There's consequences to that, and you'd have to be able to deal with it and you know go through all the essence. If you wanted to give me uh, a bunch of isk right now, you could totally do that. There's nothing stopping you because we're all in the same universe. You can read about some crazy thing that happened in EVE Online and then go there and talk to the people that were involved and experience it for yourself. And that is something that is unique, I believe, in MMO kind of worlds. That there is this one living shared history of players that are so intense and so, imp uh, like... I guess, important, critical, whatever you want to call it, that not only has EVE Online been entered into the Museum of Art for uh, the, the ongoing living sci-fi universe aspect of it, but not one, but... Hold on. Two fiction books, or two history books. These are real history books written by a real person about the real history of the fictional universe of EVE Online. In other words, what this does is it chronicles the players and their stories of the first about 10 years of EVE Online in these two stories. And they are incredible books. It's an incredible story. You get to learn a lot about human nature, about propaganda, about information, about all sorts of cool stuff in these books. Uh, this is the kind of thing that non-Eve players are able to read or experience and, and enjoy. And you, as an Eve Online player, get to participate in that. You do what you do in Eve knowing that if you do it right, someday your name is going to literally be in a book talking about how what happened in this goddamn game. That is huge to me.
It's huge. And what this has done is it's allowed us to create our own culture. We've got, you know, like a lot of MMOs have this too, but, you know, given the fact that Eve has this long story, we have our own music, we have art, we've got our own uh, you know, ver vocabulary about things. Uh, it's, it really is its own culture and community that you can come and take part in. And while a lot of us are very nasty to each other in game, if, you, if, I, if I ever get an opportunity to take advantage of a situation, I probably will. In real life, a lot of EVE players are actually incredibly solid people. You know, we've raised tons of money for various charities. EVE gatherings are always these big deal. Like, the thing is, is that EVE is a very niche thing. It allows us to become very connected to other EVE players, especially since, as I said, we're all living in one universe. So, you know, if you go to an EVE meet, you're like, you don't meet people from all different servers. You're like, oh shit, we fought you. Oh man, I saw you here. Oh, you do this? I'm going to go and try that out tomorrow. You know, whatever, right? Like there really is a sense that we're all in it together. And while there are some bad faith actors and there are, you know, there is toxicity in the game uh, for sure and within the community, because of the fact that there is this like living history and we're all in it together, while it's not perfect, that actually does get mitigated some, right? In the fact that you can make choices about how you influence the sandbox yourself and what parts of the sandbox you allow to influence you with your choices. While there is definitely some toxicity within some groups, I can speak at least for the Convocation of Empyreans, I am very, very proud of the culture that we have grown that we have grown in learning and understanding and having good communication and debates and discussions about everything from from Eve online concepts to real world politics right like we've we've had conversations within our group that are not something that you would expect to be able to talk about in in public company a lot of things right like politics and religion and all that kind of stuff but we've built a close bond together eve online likes to say it's a friendship machine there's the 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 strain of the pressures from outside causes groups within the game to become very close friends trusting and building real life bonds and friendships uh as well as real life betrayals uh, which is always fun. That's a big piece of it. However, it's not, that's not even the end of it. Beyond all of the player stuff, there's also a rich and living universe that is taking place as well. This is the Eve Universe Portal. The Eve Universe Portal has just all kinds of different lore. Not only does it have a bunch of the, the basic lore that helps you teach you about the different empires and all that kind of stuff, this is the sort of stuff that you would expect with a normal uh, like MMO or really any video game with a backstory or whatever. But there's also like, for instance, here's the world news. And the thing I want to bring to attention here, the thing I mostly want to bring to attention here is the dates of these things. Um, now, YC 124 is basically 2022, right? So we have December 8th, December 5th, November 22nd, November 21st, November 11th, November 9th. These are all things happening right? There's constantly a story going on. There are new things happening in game all the time. There are things being discovered in space all the time. There are new, new things that are being found by players, that are being done by players, and that are relating to these different empires all the time. And now with uh, Uprising and the faction warfare changes, the boundaries, the lines between the, the, the universe and its ongoing story and the players and their ongoing story is beginning to meld even further than before. So, um, you know, the, the Eve story doesn't necessarily get as much love as uh, a lot of other games uh, by the player base. But from a, from the actual game's point of view, the lore is incredibly rich. There is just an un told amount if you want to know how deep the rabbit hole goes you should just go check out any of my lore videos and realize that like none of them do anything more than scratch the surface at any given time so uh there's just an un uh, unimaginable amount of lore and story to unravel there's mysteries to uncover there are secrets and puzzles that have been in this game for over a decade 
that I don't think any current player understands. There are things to discover today that no one's ever figured out. And there are new things being put into the game all the time. We just recently had a faction campaign and we're about to, we're, we're coming up on another one. And these things can change the game in pretty fundamental levels. CCB has only ramped this up over the last couple of months with fundamental changes to the game and its territories uh, progressively happening, uh, which is pretty cool. That's point two. The third thing, the third reason to pick out, check out EVE Online and play it today is it's got deep and broad mechanical gameplay. It has a myriad of sub games and mini games. That is, it's not a game itself. It's more like a clubhouse that's full of games. It's got a satisfying nerdy experience. It's got a, uh, you know, junky experience, grindy experience, social experience, min-maxing, completionists, teamwork, subterfuge, stealth, bad actors, good actors, socialites, all that kind of stuff. It's got it all, but it somehow manages to do it without becoming too overwhelming if you do it right. So there's this concept called complexity versus depth. Complexity is the amount of information that you must have in your mind at any given time in order to make good decisions within the game. And depth is the total like design space that is available within the game, right? So the key here is, is that within EVE Online, the amount of complexity, the amount of knowledge, the amount of experience, the amount of, of skill that you need to do any given thing is relatively low. If you're looking at any given one task in EVE, it can usually be explained pretty easily. You know, it's fairly rudimentary. The complexity comes and the depth comes from what I call the rabbit hole, right? It's not very wide. There's not a lot at any given time that you need to know, but it's deep. It's endlessly deep. One thing leads to the other, which leads to the other. You know, if you just want to know how to mine, Mining is very simple, but as soon as you start asking questions like, well, where does this ore go? What do minerals get used for? What other ore is there? You know, uh, all these kinds of things. One thing leads to another, and next thing you know, you're, you've had vertigo, you vomit, and you pass out, right? Like, there is just so much to this game, but any given piece of it is relatively accessible, which is pretty cool. Another thing that is important that actually was pointed out to me as being important is that unlike other free-to-play games eve online actually has relatively few currencies eve online actually survived the transition to free-to-play significantly better than a lot of other games did because it already had a lot to it that was just good for uh or that worked with the free-to-play concept in the first place two-month-old player destroying a nine-year-old player that is actually not that unusual. I mean, assuming that the nine, if the nine-year-old player doesn't know really that much what he's doing, which trust me, there's definitely ignorant nine-year-old players, and then and the two-year-old player or two-month-old player knew what they were doing, they could easily do it. It's more about the uh, the relative understanding of the mechanics of the game at that time and having the correct tool for the job. Going back to what I was saying, there's very few currencies. There's not a whole bunch of like secondary currencies. There is ISK. There's Plex. There's loyalty points, which you earn for different corporations by doing missions with them. There's Paragon points, which you earn for, uh, which is how you get heraldry. But it isn't like we have these runaway currencies happening all the time where they're trying to like make it so that you can no longer keep track of how much things are worth. This is a very common kind of skeezy tactic of free to play kind of games. And Eve more or less doesn't uh, doesn't have that. It, it it has the one premium currency Plex, and that's used for uh, pretty much all of the premium cur uh, purchases in the game. And then you have your normal currency of of ISK, and then there are some other secondary things that are for those specific jobs, right? Like like I said, like loyalty points, for example, for doing missions or faction warfare. It keeps it pretty simple, right? In fact, I can even open up my wallet right now. And show you. I have three types of four types of currencies. I have ISK, I have Plex, I have LP, and I have Evermarks, and that's it. Also, the industry system has recently been redone. So you know, there's layers of complexity from from a very simple get the minerals and the blueprint and rub it together and get the thing, 
all the way up to the super complex where you have these chain of, where blueprints are being researched to make more advanced blueprints or sorry invented in order to make more advanced research uh stuff and then you know rare minerals are being mined from goo and or from moons and then used in reactions by different people in order to build the parts to build the advanced stuff like it gets really really complicated for the most advanced stuff and really really simple for the for the simple stuff and one of the things that they've done is that they've actually put in kind of this stepping stone there's a simplified version of the more complex stuff that you can get into when you get into like faction ships battleships and capital ships so there's all kinds of opportunities for industrialists which remind uh, which reminds me to point out that everything in the game is built by players. The ships that you fly, the bullets that you shoot, all of that stuff is built or recovered by players. It's not like any of it's necessarily like made for free or anything like that. Like ships are built by the players. The economy is a real economy and you get to participate in it. And that's pretty cool. Likewise, uh, ship fitting, right? Ship fitting is very, very interesting and complex. I actually have a long six hour video that go six hour pair of videos that goes into this sort of stuff. But not only do you have like over 500 kinds of ships, but every ship has their own setup setups with high slots for like weapons and stuff, mid slots and low slots for different kind of defensive systems, offensive systems, e-war, whatever. You get to tweak and modify and play with uh, these kinds of ships with different modules, even having different variations, just the amount of variation in the idea of ship fitting alone is just astronomical. You you will never get done with it. There are people that this is all they do is just play around with f ship fitting concepts. You know, they, there's endless opportunities there. And then even once you have your ship, there's all different kinds of content to deal with, right? There's there's solo content. There's small gang, like 10, anywhere from five to 30 people, all the way up to large gang combat with hundreds, if not thousands of players all working together in order to uh, kill the enemy team most of the time. Uh, and then if if that isn't up for you, there's even smaller mini games, right? Exploration, uh, interesting hacking and uh, scanning mini game in order to help you make money. Planetary interaction allows you to extract resources from planets in order to build things. Project discovery is citizen science, allowing players to participate in various different projects of citizen science for in-game rewards, doing real things, including mapping the human genome, detecting exoplanets, and now uh, detecting cellular changes, trying to do research into COVID-19, right? These are all things that we have done or do uh, through Project Discovery. So there's all kinds of crazy little opportunities for people off to the side as well. So great, lots to do. But now is the best time to do it. Why? Because CCP has spent the last three years making this game better for you the new player sometimes at the expense of us experienced players which is one of the reasons why you've probably heard people being upset about it if you have but for new players it's been fantastic when you first join the game there will be a kind of a tutorial that you go through which gives you some of the basics with your flight navigator aura um, but then from there you get to participate in uh, the career agents which are basically going to teach you the basics of all of the uh, different types of gameplay that you can do in the game, industry and all that sort of stuff. But then, this is the really cool part. This is the Air Career Program, okay? So the Air Career Program breaks the game into four different roles. You've got the Enforcer, which is more PvE, the Explorer, the Industrialist, and Soldier of Fortune, which is more PvP-focused, right? And each of these things have different tasks. Everything from doing the Career Agents, which are the tutorial missions, to other things that are related to that thing. So I've got, you know, security missions, abyssal dead space, all kinds of different opportunities. This shows you where to go and what to do for all kinds of ideas of how to get into the game, right? Like if I want to get into abyssal dead space, it, it shows here and it brings up a thing that allows me to find in the agency all of the information about Ab abyssal dead space. So there's never been more tools to give you direction and guidance as a new player in EVE Online. You could easily play this game for a month, especially if you're playing it fairly ra or casually, without ever running uh, running out of this like directed content, as long as you're willing to engage with it. And there's all kinds of different ideas about what to do. 
and it's all pretty simple to stuff. And you get, as I mentioned earlier, tons of free skill points and uh, skins and other cool things for your ships as part of this project. So, and the other thing is that you don't even need to deal with this. You know, if you find your own place, if you join a group, if you join a null sec block, if you know what you're going wanting to do, you can immediately just jump into whatever it is that you want to do. But now there is this direction and guidance and help for people doing uh, the career agents and the career programs. And most recently, they revamped Faction Warfare, which is the best place for new players to get PvP experience. It is the best place. It is the only place, really, to get real and uh, PVE or like a real income doing PvP activities. So Faction Warfare is a great place for a player that is willing to get into some fights um, and, and wants to get the more active side of EVE, of EVE Online. Uh, you can get into it right away and it, it allows newer players to kind of have an edge in a way on, or at least not an edge, but gives them tools that allows them to kind of even the battlefield with more experienced players. I'd, I've just recently created a, a whole video that explains Faction Warfare, how to get into it and how to get involved and why you should. Uh, so you should check that out if you're interested. But my point is, is that CCP are not only making big revel uh, uh, renovations to the game, but in general, they are focusing on making the game more accessible to players without making it easier. In fact, in several ways, they've made the game more challenging, like with the industry changes and with the market changes. They've made it so that it can't be used for just like brainless uh, money making as much anymore. There is more complexity, but again, there's more guidance, there's more help. There, and because of the fact that there is challenge and it is competitive, for those people who are willing to take on that challenge, the rewards are often great. And on top of all of that, there are loads of, of resources. In game, we have the rookie chat, which is pretty cool and is staffed by uh, ISD and other players that are willing to help people out. In the agency, there's this help section. And in the help section, there are tons of videos inside of the app. I especially like the scanning ones because scanning skills are one of those things that are very hard to like explain, but way better to like v show visually. Uh, the tutorial videos are are there. In addition to that, there are community fittings now, especially for a newer player that are looking for fits. You can go into the holes and fits section of your fitting window and then click on this third button for community fittings. And now we can see like there are all kinds of cool ideas. There's, you know, here are some basic abyssal ships, ships for the SOE Epic Arc, which are like part of the one of the first things that newer players are kind of directed towards participating in. There are uh, decent starter PvP setups. Uh, well, actually, this is a PvE setup, but like if I go to the frigates, especially, I think, um, yeah, Soldier of Fortune. So here's a decent PvP setup for a new player. All this stuff is designed for newer players. All of these things were vetted by the community and there's there's some pretty good fits in there so you can always ch check it out and start to get an idea of how to fit a ship not necessarily in game but there is also the eve academy a website that ccp has been maintaining that goes over all sorts of instructional stuff so same thing right you've got the four different roles uh, enforcer industrialist sorry explorer industrialist enforcer soldier of fortune if you click on any of these then you've got breakdowns you've got videos you've got types of things that you'll deal with as that role all kinds of really really great information this was a combination of ccp and players working together with information and guidance for people with videos etc and a lot of these videos are of course the videos that are available inside of the client as well so those are kind of the official tools but on top of that we also have tons of other tools right one of the ones I'd like to recommend is Eve University. Eve University has, for as long as I've been playing the game, faithfully been maintaining a wiki that keeps track of almost everything, right? Like Eve University has a pretty good in-game presence as well. But like if I go here, I can go and look up anything. So I can look up uh, Tristan. And here's the page on the Tristan. And so I can see like, here's all the specs about it. Here's, here's the details. Here's some stuff about tactics. 
all that kind of stuff. If I find a specific DED site, like a specific site I want to do. All right, let's, you know, let's say I find a gas process, a Serpentis gas processing site while I'm doing exploration, right? Well, I can look it up here and I can, it'll tell me exactly what kind of things I'm going to expect, what sort of things uh, I should use. And maybe there'll even be a guidance or if there's uh, if it leads to anywhere like an ex uh, like an escalation or something like that, that'll be here too. pretty much every site in the game you can find here with some basic uh, guidance and whatnot. And then on top of that, you can look up mechanics like let's say I want to know more about how implants work. I can look up the implant section and look, here's every implant and charts and how to do it. Here's a list of all of the skill uh, sk uh, implants divided by slot and by type and by everything just huge amounts of resources next we have eve workbench eve workbench is a place to share and find fits now not everything on here is like the perfect but when i'm looking for a fit this is usually where i go to start right i'll look for here and i'll look for something that seems to make pretty good sense and then you can go here and export it copy it here and then paste it into the client come back to the client open up my fitting window, go to this little cheeseburger menu and go import from clipboard, simulate. Boom. There's that fit. There's the fit that was on Eve Workbench a few seconds ago. Now it's in game and I can see what my stats are with it and I can see if I want to improve it all. And then I can just hit buy all if I wanted to do it and it'll give me a breakdown of the price and all that kind of stuff. Really cool stuff. Next, I wanted to show you Dotland. Dotland is your number one go-to spot for navigation in Eve. It's got maps of every single space in the, in the solar system, including uh, the war zones and all of the different regions and everything like that so if this is the this is the website that everyone kind of goes to for information about what what the status of the universe in eve online where the sovereignty is where what's going on in faction warfare etc now adaron.org my group uh we maintain our own faction warfare map adaron.org slash fw slash map where we show specifically the faction warfare systems and their current status right however that actually reminds me that there is a new website so this website is pretty cool it shows a kill log and it shows historical information but also ccp has recently come out with their own version of this so now you can check on the faction warfare war zone from anywhere both in this version which gives information such as advantage um and such which is really nice and also our map, which keeps track of like whether or not systems are going up or down. So lots of really good information, tactical information there. And of course, finally, I wanted to show off the fact that the Convocation of Empyreans, we maintain our own wiki along with a bunch of tools and resources for people. So here we've got essential third party tools, PIFA for building fits, Jave assets for managing your, re your assets and, and stuff, uh, Evemon for managing your character, uh, tr skill plans and stuff like that and uh pifa or uh sorry peld which is a live damage meter uh which you can see down below uh, you know all kinds of stuff there plus we've got infographics you know here's all of the different damage types of the different pirates which is useful um we've got the different ships and their their threat profiles all the different uh weapon systems uh and their ammo and their relative you know, vi visual representations and all of the new boosters from all of the login sheet of rewards and stuff like that. We've got, you know, all sorts of stuff. Websites with all kinds of other resources for anything you might want. Obviously, we've got Eve Uni and Eve Workbench should be here too, but we also have Pochvin and whatnot. And then, of course, you know, YouTubers, including myself and Twitch streamers. Uh, there are just tons of people that are more than happy to teach you how to play the game. And while I do caution people to not necessarily let people tell you what is important or what you should be doing in EVE Online, uh, having people teach you how to do what you want to do in EVE Online is critical. There are good YouTubers and good Twitch streamers for almost any kind of play style you could possibly think of in EVE. There's somebody who wants to show you how to do it. So, um, and that's uh, assuming that you don't find a group or whatever that can do it for you. So there's plenty of opportunities to get into EVE. And I th hope I've showed you that there's plenty of reason to get into EVE Online get started and make sure that 2023 YC 125 as we like to call it is your year to get started to get restarted to dive deeper into and to learn more about the game 
this is the year to do it. If you haven't been into the lore, maybe now's the time to start learning about the universe. If you've been on the sidelines, now's the time to get your character and start checking it out. If you've been gone for a while, if you left because you were mad at scarcity, now's the time to come uh, back and enjoy yourself. EVE Online is better than it has ever been, and it is only getting better and quickly. So get involved, get in early now, so that way when the more cooler stuff happens, you'll be able to be trained up, you'll be able to get these opportunities, and you won't be like all these people that I talked to today that lament at the fact that they weren't playing back when invasions were happening or back when the Othanun disaster was happening. You know, these moments in history that we get to participate in as active players. You know, I was there when Jamil was destroyed. I was there when Chakade fired at Tanu. I was there when the Dreads attacked. And you can be too. And I look forward to seeing you there. So in conclusion, now is absolutely the best time to play EVE Online. You should be bold and daring and get out there and learn from failure. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about, uh, don't worry too much about ISK or whatever. Fly cheap ships, cheap ships, go out there and do silly things and have fun doing it. Use a buddy code like the one down below or anyone else's for 1 million free SP on every single account that you make. You can even make a whole bank of accounts and then get them all trained in like uh, what's called the Magic 14, which are a bunch of skills that are useful no matter what. Uh, and then you will have a bunch of blank clones that are ready to go for whatever you want within a few months. The buddy code is, is, is very valuable. And, and even if you already have an account, you can now use the buddy code, sign in if you've never used it before, and get your million free SP even today. Uh, if you've been gone and you're coming back, make sure to get them million free SP as well. And then of course, my final piece of advice for those who are trying to get into the game, join the Convocation of Empyreans. We'd be happy to have you. As I said, uh, we're here to maximize player engagement with EVE Online. We're here to help you get involved in EVE. And we're also here to help you learn and love EVE. And you know what? If, if in the end you find out that you want to go do something like wormholes or null sec or something else like that, we have plenty of resources to get you hooked up with a good group that will bring you in and take good care of you. So uh, that's about it. That is my story. And that's why you should play EVE Online and how you should play, uh, how you can best get into EVE Online quickly and easily. I would like to thank my patrons and other supporters for uh, making all of this possible, making this stream possible, making these videos possible with your wonderful support. I especially would like to thank AR, Alon Gardner, Alera, Andrew, Balea Galente, Captain Obvious Uta, Cold Wave, Dan, Divulje, Alonje, Fatewinder, Katobo Maniac, Faisal, Garland Gringham, Gragnor, Grisu, Quixporn, Lars Haynes, Luke, uh, Spoons, Michael Porter, Matt Hatter, Nolan Rourke, 1982, Steve, Unafraid Cookie, Yellow Clad King, Jer, Jenny, and Talking in Stations, as well as my co-designers, Abyssus, Aika Warazu, Chan, uh, Aaron Danica the Queen, Black Rose Noble, Dejat Lamont, Drake, Go Golden Age Stories, J. Kuhn, LM1, Malik Starfire, Midnight Spakes Monkey, Not Just Fun, Seeds of Plenty, Serenolin with No Eyes, Siliana Valesh, Nephilim, Grendel, Zolnex, as well as my immortal peer patrons, Ebolite and Rid. Thank you guys so much. I think that list is officially getting long enough now that I'm going to have to change which which names I read and which names I just post uh, as text. Uh, consider that, I guess, maybe the last time for doing that. But yes, no, I, I really do appreciate it. And of course, all of the people who uh, get your memberships uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, to get you get access to member-only videos, you get access to member-only emotes, you get access to videos early and behind-the-scenes videos and additional content. Much appreciated to those. There's multiple tiers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, make sure to check out a membership if you're interested in supporting the channel uh, and making this all happen. And uh, thank you to anybody who gives any super thanks and super chats in uh, in any of my streams. Uh, it's a good way to get your attention, get attention, and get my eternal appreciation because all of this is only possible because of your guys' support. Eve Online is not a 
big community compared to others. It's not like I'm rolling in the dough as a YouTuber, but you guys give me just enough to make it so that I can continue this and uh, still have time to take care of my son and everything that I need to do. And I, I just, I'm incredibly thankful for that. I'm incredibly thankful for the, the many years that we've had together. And I look forward to helping be your guide to EVE Online in YC125. I, I do want to also thank the Convocation of Empyreans. I, I want to give a special shout out to GM here in comms, our uh, supply officer. She has taken on a challenge that I would not wish upon anyone, and she has done it with grace and effectiveness, and we could not be where we are without her. Uh, but on the subject of uh, women in my life that I could not do things without, I also would like to thank Ardenica the Queen, Ardenica Danny, who uh, was one of my early inspirations for getting into Eve and getting into Eve uh, content creation, and now comes and spends her time to help take care of my videos and make sure that my shit uh, stays at least somewhat coherent. And works on all of those awesome things like from the market uh from the from the merch store that you can go check out uh yeah very much thank you to to both of those fine ladies in my life and of course everyone else in the convocation of Empyreans, the directors and the staff that make things happen and for you guys being willing to sit here during my streams during my videos watching it all the way through uh it's a huge deal given the those of you who give likes to my videos comments on my videos I love you. I read all of the comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. And of course, for those of you who share my videos with other people, like that is so huge. You know, I'm trying to help raise, you know, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help raise Eve literacy, help people understand the game on a deeper level, help break through the idea that um, there's, you know, the, the, the lore isn't interesting or the mechanics are too hard or things are too obtuse or there's no explanation for things. Eve is a long and glorious game with a long and glorious history. And we're here to help get people involved and understand the true nature of the crazy, awesome thing that we get to participate in. So uh, thank you all for that. Without further ado, I have been Ashtarothi, the voice of New Eden, and until next time, I'll see you in space.